It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. And it's all up next. We're in the so-called rock and roll capital of the world, Cleveland, Ohio, at First Energy Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. Tonight, we've got a good AFC matchup on tap between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. set to do the honors here and we are underway from Cleveland they'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone and that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20 the Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback hey we all love a good story but what we like even more guys who can fight through adversity Joe Burrow coming out of high school goes to Ohio State doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft, and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Right to the air is Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. start to the drive. Burrow looking to pass. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Well, right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Fourth down, out comes the punter, Drew Chrisman. Back deep, Jakeem Graham. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. They'll be led out by Deshaun Watson. Of course, he won a national title at Clemson and already has three Pro Bowls under his belt in the National Football League. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. On second and seven, Watson, and oh, he caught it up, and the Bengals grab it, and his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. 
we have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Just not a hole. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Yeah, that's when we turn to your wife and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because, remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. Yeah, the next-gen stat's going to illustrate just how quickly a quarterback has to process everything as he was on the ground in under three seconds, 2.9 to be precise. And any time you see a kicker try down to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at their own 46. They'll begin the drive with Hunt, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Watson. Over the middle complete. It's Hunt. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. We're scoreless after one. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll run for it, here's Chubb. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's gonna leave him with a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Back deep, Trent Taylor. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And partner, I know so far, we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy, zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right? Where these teams are locked in and going at it. No points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over there to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coach is always talking about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. 
Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards up. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. Williams loses the football. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. I feel like you and I could be in our backyard with our dads right now. What did they always say when they were throwing us the ball? Look it all the way in. Make sure you secure it. That had the feeling of not happening there on that play, but he didn't have full control of the ball. When that punt's coming in, I don't have a return punch, but I would imagine it's tough to monitor those guys coming full steam ahead. It really is. You try and get that peak to know where they are about whether you should fair catch it or not, but sometimes you just have to have a, a sense, a feeling, and just have to make sure, number one, though, you catch the ball and put it away. Let's go, man. Let's go. Here we go. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Burrow throw. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. And he's taken down at the 7 after a gain of 7. Well, if you do read man covers, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals post the first points of the ballgame as they take the lead here in this second quarter. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Evan McPherson for the extra point. He's got it to make it 7 0 Bengals. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. On first down, Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now a first down throw, Watson. This complete to David Bell. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. From the 45 on second down, Watson. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect. Now the ball comes loose, and the Bengals grab it. And the return stops just a little bit shy of midfield at the 48-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but... I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the Here effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It's a gain of 34. But they didn't ease into that drive right out of the turnover. They go for the big shot downfield and hit it. A lot of teams have that opportunity, but not every coach is going to green light that type of a play call. I love their aggressiveness. Let's go, 
<laughs> so from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Here we go. First down, here's Burrow. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Now you can almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So able to add on to their first half lead here, Charles, forcing the miscue with a fumble and then turning that into three points. Yeah, and more than happy to accept any mistakes the other side is willing to make. No problem. You turn it over, we'll take that, and we'll use it to expand our lead. Wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And no reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Cincinnati. And despite the big lead, they really did next to nothing throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage. We'll see how aggressive they want to be going forward. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they too have found passing lanes to be hard to come by so far. As you see by the numbers, they'll need to figure that out in the second half. Final adjustments being made in the locker room. We're just about set for the second half from Cleveland. And to bring it your way, we go back up to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The Browns offense getting set to go to work here to start the third. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, They've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. The opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's Watson. Tries the right side, and he finds Bell. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who is so compact and powerful. And that strength was on display there. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed out of my way and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And the next gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Back to the ground, this time it's Chubb. And they'll get this to the 30 yard line before crossing over out of bounds. A 
any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens. Oh, jump fumbled it, and the Bengals grab it. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So it's kind of more of the same offensively. This was a team needing to come out of this third quarter with a little fire. Instead, they put the ball on the ground. And you know that has to be the discussion at halftime because they're down two scores. We've got to come out with a little bit more urgency than we had in the first half. Now that urgency falls on their defense because they can't fall down three scores and hope to come back and win this game. Here we go. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 right at the 30. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Here we go. Here we go. Third quarter action. Appreciate you joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. Second and 10. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control. Here we go. Sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Open receiver. That's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here and have them staring at a third and long. And that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here we go. The offense on third down tonight. Just one for five to this point. This is third and four. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there that takes away what could have been a touchdown. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Watson. Got it to Bell on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Watson on third down. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. 
Desperation time. Watson on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously, twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not here we go, here we go. over. As you said, two-score game still. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Again, it's Mixon. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the here box go, go. coming after them trying to keep them from locking down the game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Here we go. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Inside handoff to Nixon. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Mix it up the middle. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On one, right? They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Hasn't had his best game running the football here tonight, but hey, that's a critical spot right there to convert on third down, and he did it. And the lights are shining just a little bit brighter right now, aren't they? You remember the beginning of the game? If he gets this first down, everybody's happy. That's cool. But here, that was critical, and it really energizes them. A go. good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. <laughs> They'll give it to Mixon. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. This is where coaches have go, to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? Clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you said, you don't want to get in the end zone too. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon taking it in from four yards out. And the Bengals have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. That kind of puts the bow on what has been a complete performance, Charles. They're pitching a shutout on the other side in this offense. They've done their thing well, too. Yeah, this game has been all-out effort from them on every snap, and there's a good amount of pride on the line right now. They want to finish what they started. They want the shutout preserved. So now the Bengals offense will stay out there as he'll decide to go for two. They'll let Mixon try and run it in. And he will dive into the end zone, and the two-point conversion is successful. And they're able to ground it in there on the two-point try. And you and I were talking before the game that two-point conversions from the 15-16 season, what has changed, what hasn't changed, partner? Yeah, I'll tell you what's changed is just your, no your normal strategy because now you're either kicking the football with the ball on the 15-yard line or if you decide to go for two, they put it on the two-yard line. So what are you thinking as a coach? Do I risk it? Do I go for it here? Do I try and gain a strategic advantage and maybe go for two early? That's what people are wondering about. 
And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. One last throw here for Watson. He's got Najoku, his big tight end. And he's going to get this down near the 25. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. So they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one.